Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Infinite Inkwell. I'm Lewis and I'm on a journey exploring different ways that I can tell stories and trying out a few of my own. I'm building my very first video game with no coding skills and no previous experience doing so. I've already done my game design document so I know the type of game that I'm going to make but I don't know what engine to use yet. I started by looking at the different engines that are available on the game engine database. This was actually quite useful. I started to use this to really create a shortlist of the type of engines that I might want to use. Of course, many of the most popular ones came up. Unity, Unreal, Godot, Game Maker Studio, and a whole bunch of other ones. For the purpose of this, I actually narrowed it down to just a handful. And I want to talk through my thinking process around how I started to explore each of these engines. With YouTube being a second home for me, I actually started exploring what content was out there around different engines. I actually discovered some really interesting videos and things that started to come to light that I wasn't aware of before. I follow the industry quite closely and I know that there's been some controversy in the last couple of years with one engine in particular, and that's Unity. Unity did some pretty shady stuff with the pricing of their engine. I know they rolled back a lot of the changes, but there's still a lot of trust within the community that has disappeared. Unity has been used to make some fantastic games over the years. We've had some great titles like Cuphead, Tunic. Marvel Snap, which has been a personal addiction. Hollow Knight, Sea of Stars. It can do amazing things and has been used by indie devs for years. But the damage they did to their community actually led to a lot of developers jumping ship and some even rebuilding their entire game on a different engine. And this engine was Godot. Godot is meant to be really good at 2D games. There are some question marks around its 3D games, but it has made some fantastic titles. But it's still quite early in its development. It's open source and it's free to use, which is fantastic. It does have some limitations on where I can publish it, but that's not too bad. One of the things I thought was really cool about Godot is that it will run on a potato. It's a 35 meg install. It doesn't require a lot of processing power. As I mentioned in my previous video, the only Windows PC I have access to is a potato. It has relatively low spec and my Mac is it's a pretty good Mac, but it's still pretty limited. You know, I'm not sporting a machine with a 4090 and the latest i9 processor. So I have to think about what my limitations are when building something from scratch. The other things that I really liked about Godot looking at it is that there are two ways for me to be able to build in it. You have GD script, which is a little bit like Python. That actually could be quite useful for me. In my normal job, I actually work with data scientists all the time and knowing a bit of Python wouldn't be a bad idea. Yes, I know it's very, it's different, but it's based on it. You used it as a framework. So it could actually be almost like a gateway drug to Python <laughs> in like a weird way. It might be helpful to learn GD script. However, there is an alternative to GD script, which is C++. Now I know that C++ doesn't have all the bells and whistles when it's used within Godot, but actually could offer me more flexibility in the future. If I wanted to move over to a different engine, like Unreal, which I'm gonna to come to in a minute, that is all C++. So if I wanted to go and learn a different engine, I could. Whilst Godot is still starting out, it has brought us one of my favorite titles right now, which is Brotato. That constant loop is really, really fulfilling. I get a lot of kicks out of it. There's lots of customization. The difficulty goes up as you keep progressing through and you keep completing the first 20 waves. And I really enjoy it. It's my go-to turn off brain game. And that was built in Godot. So I think that there's definitely something to it. So many different developers wouldn't be using it for no reason. This is actually quite hard. I didn't expect this to be a big challenge looking at how many developers have flocked to Godot and how well received it has been in the community. Next up is the engine that I just mentioned, Unreal. Unreal is probably one of the biggest names in video games. It has been the bedrock of AAA gaming for years. So many of the biggest titles have been built in this. Bioshock, Senua's Sacrifice, Sea of Thieves. The latest version of Unreal 5 looks incredible. We saw with the Matrix Awakens demo just how spectacular a game could look. The level of realism in it is mind boggling. We've already seen from some of the stuff that's coming up in the next year or so, it's only going to get better. It's a 3D platform, right? Actually, no. There have been people trying to build 2D games in the Unreal Engine. They've actually been trying to build upon in recent years. They know that their community is trying to build 2D games and they want to help facilitate that. So they've been definitely trying to do a lot more. In fact, I found someone who's been doing it for a while and actually has been putting out stuff on YouTube around how you can build a 2D game 
within Unreal, which in itself is kind of unreal. <laughs> This is Cobra Code. I first discovered him through a video that he did with Thomas Brush. Can you build a 2D game in Unreal? I then went on and watched a couple of his other videos and thought, there's, there's something here. It was through Thomas Brush's YouTube channel where I actually started to really consider my options. He had an interview with the creator of Choo Choo Charles about how he made the game. And what was super interesting about this is that he didn't write a line of code. He used something built into Unity called Blueprint. Blueprint is a visual editor for your game. You can build everything within Blueprint. It's just a series of flows and events. You don't need to write any code. And that's, that's game changing. That actually makes me consider Unreal more. It's not built for 2D development, but why wouldn't I use it? I don't have to write code. I can have a game that looks pretty awesome. And from a lot of the stuff I've seen, there's a lot of drag and drop elements. I know learning to use Blueprint will be a challenge, but why wouldn't I? I want to shout out a lot of the creators that I watched and I haven't mentioned yet. So Samyam, Emerald, Stop Shut Games. These guys have made some really interesting content that has actually shifted some of my thinking around what engines I should be looking at. In fact, Emerald's I built the same game in nine engines was really interesting. How easy is it to pick these things up? If you only have experience in one language and one engine, how do you start to pick up others and play with them and be able to do the same thing in different engines? The accessibility actually made me stop and think. While there were some no code solutions in there, like GD Develop, Construct, and RPG Maker, I felt that they had some limitations that weren't quite right for me. I also wanted to make sure that whatever I was picking up had some practical element that I could reuse elsewhere in my life. This is where both Unreal and Godot started to come into their own because I didn't have to be stuck on one platform. I could use the C++ on both Godot and Unreal. GD Script would allow me to better learn Python. The last engine that I'm gonna talk about is Game Maker Studio. Game Maker Studio actually looks pretty awesome and I've seen what it can do. With Game Maker Studio, we've seen games like Forager. Forager was a relatively new one for me until recently, and I played it on Game Pass. It was a lot of fun. There was something that was repetitive and enjoyable about it. Hotline Miami was awesome. The styling was so unique and different from what we were used to and actually played really well. We've got games like Undertale, which is meant to be amazing. It's a game I've not touched yet, but I've only heard good things about it. With Game Maker Studio, it has its own language, which is no big deal, right? I mean, Godot also has its own language, but it's not got any other flexibility where with Godot, I can go and learn C++ and use that there. I can't do that with Game Maker. Also with Game Maker, I'm kind of limited to just making 2D games, where in the future, I might want to explore doing something in 3D. Godot does 3D natively, so it's less of an issue or a concern for me to go, oh right, I need to go and learn a different engine now. I don't have to do that if I'm using Godot. With Game Maker, I'm gonna have to go and learn something else. It's not impossible to build a 3D game in Game Maker Studio, but it's not easy. So I guess that's a consideration. So where does that leave me now? Well, if I'm honest, I've already ruled out Unity, right? We know that's not happening. I think I'm gonna rule out Game Maker as well, which is a shame. I know it's something that a lot of the communities have been really big fans of, but I think I'm finding its limitations a bit of a barrier, which leaves me with Godot and Unreal. And I don't know what I'm gonna do. Do I wanna use Godot, something that's really flexible, super indie friendly? There's lots of stuff out there already that I can kind of go over and learn from. It's open source and free, so I'm never gonna get charged for using it. Or do I use Unreal? Arguably the biggest player in this space other than Unity. Unreal doesn't have an upfront cost, but the million dollar mark, they take their cut as well but saying that if you're making a million dollars already on your game five percent is hardly the end of the world well not for independent guy like me hmm. so cost shouldn't be an issue but then there's how do i run it we've kind of already spoken about how godot will run on a potato that's not an issue right i can run that on both my windows machine and my mac without an issue can i do the same with unreal the minimum specs on unreal are actually pretty low which surprised the crap out of me but i'm gonna have to test it i'm going to do something that I didn't think I would do. I'm gonna spend a lot of time doing it, but I think it'll be worth it in the long run. I think I'm gonna try and do something quite basic in both. And by <laughs> by both, I don't mean I'm gonna make the game twice. I just want to make a simple level where you have a character that can jump around and effectively get from the, you know, 
from the start to the finish, and that's it. This is not going to be a fair fight. I'm going to use Blueprint in Unreal and GD Script in Godot, and I want to see how they fare. I want to see which one feels more intuitive, which one actually seems the most straightforward. If I can get it to work, I might actually stream it. But this is a weird one, and I don't know which is going to come out on top. The one thing that it does mean is that I'm not learning C++ in either. So maybe we make this a four-way thing. I make the same little level with the same mechanics and character going through it. Two in Unreal, one with Blueprint, one with C++, and two in Godot. One using GD Script, the other using C++. Make it a fair fight and see how I get on. And whilst I can't promise that will be the next video, I can promise that I'll share it and we'll see where we go from here. So there we go. We're down to four, the final four, which is actually really only the final two, but it should be interesting to see what I can do with these. If you enjoyed this debate about game engines, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button. If you want to come on the journey with me and see what I can make in both of these engines twice in each engine. Oh God. Um, then, then do please hit that subscribe button and come with me and see what we can do with this and see what game I will end up making in one of those engines. Also other ways that I'm going to explore storytelling. If you enjoyed this video then you might also enjoy this one here. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.